Don Dabney, Life Goes Classics. And like a lot of you, I still get emotionally attached to a lot of cars. We have some really expensive cars here and some pretty awesome cars. But this Valiant's kind of a cool story. So let me try to recap it as best I can. Um, I got a call from a, uh, a lady who was managing her uh, family's estate. And uh, we had got a, a 56 T-Bird, a beautiful 56 Fiesta Red T-Bird from them. And, uh, and so I went over to the house in our little town of Sonoma. There's a little section called Glen Allen. So you probably heard about the big fires that we had back in October. And I'll get back to that in a minute. So anyway, I head over to uh, the house after I get the T-Bird thing sorted out. And I see this Valiant shoved under a tree and the license plate tags expired in 1980. And the windows were kind of cracked down and there was some rat's nest under the hood. And, and the tires were totally flat. It still had like, I think it had bias ply tires on it, believe it or not, which, which kind of draws me back to the mileage thing, which I'm gonna get into. So basically I end up, um, you know, worrying that this car is gonna just wither away because I think they were just gonna take it to the crusher. She's like, I don't think you want that. It's just gonna go to the crusher. But, you know, so I head over to uh, check out the car and I, I took a video as I went over there. It's kind of amateur video. Sorry, the car's leaning, the car's rolling backwards as I stand here. So I made a video. So I'm gonna cut to that right now and you can see me like discovering the car in the state I discovered it in. Wow, so I'm out in Glen Ellen and I was asked to come check this out. It's an estate. Look at this. It's got the original uh, black plates. I think it's a one owner car. Yeah, the body is actually super straight. A little bit of scuffing on this fender. It's a Valiant 100. Yeah, the body is super straight. You know, the rockers are straight. I can't really see the floors, but I think what I'm gonna offer for the car is gonna be enough that if the floors are bad, I won't get hurt. So it needs four new tires. I'm sure it's gonna need a battery and a cold start if the motor turns. This is the original interior. Look at that. Looks like a local car. I can't even read this because it's so old and crunchy. Look at the interior. Looks like it needs the seats redone. So I just opened up the hood. I checked it out, the motor is turning, but it's an absolute rat's nest in here. We're gonna need battery, carb rebuild, water pump, hoses, belts, fluid changes, probably have to rot out the uh, radiator. We're gonna need four tires. So you saw the day I found the car and um, so we get the car back over here, and I'm like, what have I done? <laughs> you know, I, I paid a few hundred bucks for it. I really didn't pay very much for it because they were just gonna send it to the crusher anyway and get whatever they were gonna give them. And, um, but the irony is, the irony is the, uh, that when Sonoma Valley was on fire last December 2017, or last October 2017, just a few months ago, um, it, the neighborhood this car was in burnt to the ground. So um, I just, you know, I saw it sitting there and I thought it's going to the crusher. I'm going to at least try and save it. I mean, worst case is I won't make any money and I'll break even, which is pretty much what I'm expecting. So anyway, the car came back over here. I really didn't have time to mess with it for a couple of weeks. So I called my uh, mechanic, Pete, who's just kind of lower budget, doesn't charge me an arm and a leg. And I said, I don't know if this car is going to run, but it's a slant six with a three on the tree. And you know, those things are notoriously pretty bulletproof. And another thing is the miles on the odometer, they're really low. Well, I'm going to just look because I forgot exactly what they are, but they're, uh, yeah, 44,500 miles showing on the odometer. And uh, which the neighbor, I talked to a neighbor when I saw the car and they said, oh yeah, I think those are the original miles. She just got a new car and parked it under the tree and like, like with the windows cracked and just like left it there. So it definitely got the weather, but amazingly it didn't get the rust. And you'll see that in there. There's rust in the front floor wells. That's it. And um, you know, the, the, the climate up here is mild. It's not like it's sitting in the snow. But uh, other than that though, the windows were cracked. The interior got kind of thrashed. We had to rip out the headliner and because it was hanging, the, the dash is warped, the seats need to be done. 
But the body is actually super straight. We're pretty sure this is the original pain. Anyway, I'm, I'm, let me digress. So I took it over to Pete's and I, you know, I ordered a new gas tank and I think a, a new, uh, I think we ordered a new fuel sender. Uh, we did the, uh, the brake cylinders, went through the braking system. I think we put new brake hoses on it. I can't remember. Um, you know, put all new fluids in, flushed everything out, put a new battery in the car, put new tires on it. The tires were so wasted, like they didn't hold air. And, uh, and so Pete, re oh, then Pete rebuilt the carburetor. I think he, whatever, hooked a few things up, fires the car up, starts right up. However, there's a catch. The rings, I think the rings are cracked because it is smoky. But uh, anyway, it shifts great, starts, runs, drives, brakes, the gas tanks in. So like a lot of that ancillary stuff we already took care of. So now it's just like, I think if somebody did a valve job and put new rings in it, you probably have a pretty good driving car and then you could just get on to the cosmetics. So, and the cosmetics, I think, would be pretty simple. I can't, we can't find any filler in the car. It looks like it's the original paint, and uh, it's just really kind of more of a, you know, valve job, cosmetic, resto. Kind of probably would be a fun winter project for somebody to do. Or it would probably be a cool car if you wanted to convert it and do a, a V8. I think we figured out how the, I don't have the caps off, but I think it's got five lug wheels, and kind of the stuff is there if you want to turn it into like a, you know, a higher performance car. But anyway, that's kind of it. We got it running. It definitely smokes and idles smooth. It, you know, runs, shifts, brakes. It kind of does all that stuff. It just, uh, it just smokes like a sieve. And uh, we even poured some, you know, smoke stopper in it to see if that would kind of loosen up the uh, rings or, or whatever. But I think they're cracked. So anyway, that's kind of what's going on. You'll see a bunch of pictures here. I'll. Uh, here, I'll, I'll kick you under the hood and show you the car with the video. There it is. So, yeah, you can see like all the original paint is inside the, the inner fender wells. You know, it's just kind of all there. We The alternator actually was working, and but uh, you, know, you get a little yeah. surface rust up there under the hood. And it's got these, uh, you know, the original black plates. We'll come around the back of the car. I had to drive it, so I took it off and put it back on again. Got a little, uh, yeah, a little kind of a scrape sort of thing right there. Need a little filler to get that one worked out. Yeah, a little, really minor little thing right there. Look at that paint. This is, it was under the tree, so I think the, uh, probably had some sort of effect here where the paint's just like flaking off and you can see the, uh, the old primer under the car. A little bit of a scrape right there. You can see some little uh, surface rust down here, but it's not like rot. It's just surface stuff. And coming out here, the body looks pretty straight. So yeah, it should be really easy in terms of body work. Let me uh, close the hood here. Put a new battery in it too. And uh, yeah, here's the, uh, here's the factory tag right there. See the, uh, the old sticker is still there over here too. All right, let's close this up. There's your black plate, and you can see the tag expired in 1980. Yeah, so years ago. yeah, that wow. was. You check around the windows. You know, there's no rot around the windows or anything either. And you got surface rust up there on the the roof. No rot there around the windshield. So all right, so let's show you the inside. We had to uh the interior on it, it was just it was trashed from being open. The car wasn't closed up all the way. Duh. So it had a seat cover put on it, and then I think like the mice ate through some of this, and then the back seat was so bad, my mechanic just he put a blanket over it, and the headliner was hanging on him, so he just tore it out. You can see it needs a dash pad. Those are readily available. I think most of this interior stuff you can get. And uh, when you look at under the car, 
I got into that. This area right here, the low spot of the floors on both sides need to be replaced, but they're, I think the panels are a hundred and, I think they were a hundred and sixty bucks for the pair. And uh, so they're just cut out, pop the new ones in, weld them in and you're good to go. The rest of the floor is really solid. Anyway, I hope somebody out there digs it and saves it. I've done everything I can do for it. It's somebody else's turn now. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and take a climb under the uh, Plymouth here. Valiant. This is a one owner car. I probably covered that in the description, so I'll just leave that all in there. But basically, you know, the undercarriage is super clean. The car sat for many years. It has no rust anywhere except only at these front floor wells where you can see we've inserted some metal just to have a place to put our feet. So it collected some uh, moisture up there. These floor pans, this particular section for both sides, I found them on eBay brand new for 160 bucks. So I think those could just easily be cut out, weld in new fronts, and you should be good to go because the rest of it, as you can see, is just uh, really solid. All the way up in here into the reverse side of the rockers, it's just kind of your quintessential California car. You come up here to the rear quarters and those have surface rust, but they just don't have any rot. Come over and check this side. And the uh, car doesn't appear to have had any accidents. I can't unequivocally know that for sure, but it just looks like it's just super original. And uh, when you read the description and understand the story, it kind of makes sense. And get up in here and, you know, it's just all really solid up in there. So... Very straight, for sure, in a very uh, rot-free body, but you just have those two floor sections at the front footwell area. All right, let's uh, let's fire it up. I got to warm it up. I want to I want to kind of show you the smoke situation. All righty. I now bear in mind too. I haven't driven this thing more than a mile or two. Because the smoke's pretty embarrassing in it. <laughs> and we're in Northern California and I might end up at a federal penitentiary if some Prius driver sees me. So um, who knows? Maybe if it got driven down some country roads, it might, I don't know, stop smoking as much. But I wouldn't, you know, hold your breath. Let's fire it up. Okay, I'm gonna just sort of let it warm up a tad. So what I do know is the uh, lights turn on. Uh, the flasher doesn't seem to go on, and the uh, the left blinker, the indicator's not going on. I can hear the right one trying, but I'm going to guess that both the flasher and the blinker unit should probably be replaced from sitting. Um, you know, the radio will make a little noise, but the antenna's broken off, so like you can't really tune in. Um, let's see. Okay, the heater fan comes on. There you go. Uh, darn it, that worked earlier. There you go. Yeah, I mean, I think all the contacts, fuse box, all that stuff. Somebody needs to clean that stuff. Anyway, let me uh, get out while it's idling and kind of show you the smoke situation. So you see what's kind of happened there. It's a uh, Definitely on the blue side, but it's weird. It, you know, it runs quietly. It just definitely smokes. So there you have it. The smoking one owner sitting in storage for 38 year, 38 years, Plymouth Valiant with California black and gold plates. I mean, I kind of like it, but I got too many projects, too many pet projects around the property. So we have a clear California title in my business name, ready to sign over to the next lucky owner. All right, thanks for watching. Give me a call if you have any other questions.